We won! Yeah! <laughs> four, four, four. Period. That's it. See, I already gave the opening statement. Opening statement. Yeah. Can't take the second boy. We're good for We're good with questions. <sighs> Your name's over here. No, you should say where Coach Gasso sits. No. I dare you. That's mine. Sure. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do? Cut you? Off? <laughs> uh, for all the seniors, well, all of you are seniors here, right? So, you know, what does it mean to win this championship? For some of you, four, Kelly, your first, uh, you know, you guys are the greatest senior class ever. What does that mean to you guys? Okay, I'll go. <laughs> all right. Come on, Captain. <laughs> um, this one is to me. I definitely felt a little bit more sentimental. You know, we grew up together. I've been. We came in. I came in at 17 with Boone, and then they came in freshman year after COVID, and you know Kelly transferred in, and just I'm so so proud of this team, and everyone had their hand in it. It was never one hero at the plate or one hero on the mound or anything like that. So this was a team effort, and we fought all season. You know. Everybody had something to say about us all the time, and people counted us out, and they had, it was just a grind. All in, mentally, physically, and we fought the whole year, and it was all so worth it in this moment. I think God was in this year yeah. the biggest. Um, mm -hmm. I think just being able to, like, just sit back and think of all the natties, but this one I felt his hand over this program more than I ever have. Um, There's a lot of souls saved um, this year and probably some that we don't even know about, but just knowing that people are watching us and they're asking questions about, you know, like, why do you do what you do? Um, how are you even able to do this? And um, the answer is always God. So I feel like God was really present this season. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go front row right now. Um, Brady Vernon, Softball America. Just Kelly, putting softball aside, what has this past year been like growing with this group and what like the final out kind of meant to you? Uh, it's been awesome. This whole team, they're special. Um, I'm just thankful that I got to be a part of this. Um, we've been through a lot this year, um, but like Boone said, God is here. Um, he's present and I can feel that. And I know that just wherever we go after this, um, we'll be taken care of. We'll go front row left now to Ryan. Ryan Aber from the Oklahoma. And for, for all the players, maybe starting with uh, Jada, w Kinsey just called it a grind of a season. What was the, the toughest uh, point in it for each of y'all? And, and how did y'all sort of push through that to get where you are now? Yeah, um, honestly, the whole season was tough. For me personally, I know I had very high expectations so even just right off the bat, just playing our first game, I just, I felt the pressure, I felt the expectations. And as we went on, if we lost one game, two games, lost to Texas, everyone had an opinion about us. And it was frustrating just to see everyone on Twitter and on TikTok, just hoping that anyone else but us will win. And Oh, yikes. Yep. <laughs> that didn't happen, so <laughs> we're blessed. Yeah, I would just say the same thing. Um, not even pressure from the outside, but I think pressure on, each, on, our, on ourselves. I think for me, that was my biggest thing, um, trying to do everything I can for this team. But in reality, I didn't have to do anything at all. And I think that was when I was at my best, when there was no expectations on myself, just to um, be on this team, just be present, just to celebrate everyone's successes. Um, but that was my biggest struggle this year. Um, but going through this postseason, I felt so free, so much fun, um, no expectations, no pressure. Um, but Jada was right, like listening to everybody and hearing all the stuff. But we did a great job of staying within each other. We didn't let it bother us at all. Mm -hmm. um, and we just came out here. We stuck together. And this, this is it's family. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my biggest struggle this season was definitely more on the physical side. I um, struggled with a little bit of injury earlier in the season. And um, if my whole career, I've kind of had things going on like that. So just kind of um, learning to fight through that and go through, like we said, this whole team has fought and fought 
all season long. And I hope that being in the leadership role this year, that when I was fighting through that, that I was able to lead by example. And um, I'm just so proud of this team's fight, truly. And it was hard the whole season and we fought through it. And it was just, it was pretty, it was special. Yeah, mine, I'm with everyone else. This whole season was hard. I, Mine was just learning to be at a 10, and I know Jay knows what I'm talking about, but being able to exhaust myself for others um, to the best of the ability that God gives me, um, but just trying to stay in that role, but also not trying to do too much while I'm in that role. I know, like, I like being nine hole, and I'm okay with that. And I know that, you know, these great softball players, you know, once generational players, um, they get the job done. So I really, to me, just felt the role to like be their backbone in any way that I could, whether I'm over, whether I'm well, not over, but just being able to encourage them um, outside of the field and just knowing that they're enough without softball. Uh, mine was definitely my decision to come here. Um, I received a lot of hate, a lot of doubt, but I'm just thankful for these girls and this team and the staff just to pick me up um, and have my back and just everything that I've been through and to have God right by my side, just working in my life. And I'm grateful that I'm here. All right, we'll go second row right to Justin. Justin Martinez of the Oklahoma and Jade, I want to ask you about the morning of that elimination game against Florida and the speech that Shay Knighting gave you guys. Just in that moment, how much did her message uh, resonate with you guys and prepare you for the run that you went on to make? Yeah, um, I will never forget that meeting for the rest of my life. I have looked up to Shay Knighting since I was in the seventh grade. And just first off, her just be in the same room as me was like surreal. And just for her to just open up her heart and just talk about the Lord and just pretty much just telling us that we are not alone and that she's been through this before. And anytime that we were on the field, that if we just wanted to look up to her, that she can just give us 30 seconds of encouragement. And I use that very, very often ever since she told me that. So, um, but it was just a surreal moment. I remember just like, I just started bawling, crying, and I don't really know why, but just sometimes the Lord just moves your heart in just a certain way that, like, that's just something I'll just never forget in my life. All right, we'll go front row left, Eric. Uh, Eric Bailey with the Tulsa World. Uh, for Kenzie and Riley, uh, does a four-year career go like a blink of an eye now that you're sitting here in your senior year? And what were some of the words of wisdom you got from some of the older players that played before you? And what do you want to let players like Cassidy know, like Sid know, some of those younger players? And what, do you, what kind of legacy do you want to leave for them? <clears throat> Kenzie, you want to I, would, yeah. I would say that the legacy that we kind of wanted to show them was to leave it all on the field every day and never take it for granted. Riley and I came in, we played about 20 games our freshman year and it all was taken away in a blink of an eye on March 13th um, and we were sent home. So I never thought I'd be thankful for COVID, but here I am um, with a four feet. So thanks Jesus for that, I guess. But <clears throat> um, just being able to show them what true tenacity looks like and showing them to never give up and never give in never just no matter how much your body hurts no matter how many l's you take no matter how much you get punched in the mouth like i said the other day just to always get back up and to always keep going riley do you have anything yeah, you're um yeah i'd probably say me and hansen could agree on that this doesn't it matters but it doesn't matter like this is very um spiritual wise like this is unsatisfying but you remember um like me and hansen freshman year you remember the breakthroughs that god moves inside jada tia kelly like the baptisms um that that's what that's what matters and um people are going to remember you for what you did off the field not on the field like records are meant to be broken we did that this year um but i just like for Cass and ella maya all the um, underclassmen like be an impact off the field and you'll never get forgotten in their lives because you mark you mark hearts there um, with what you do to them. Alright we're going to second our ride to Myron. Myron Patton OKC Sports. Uh, Kelly I don't know if you knew 
bottom of the six, you were alone, camera was on you, you were looking down and seemed to be really in deep thought. Could you share with what you were thinking about, what was going through your mind, maybe even talking to yourself, I couldn't really tell, but it was on, camera was on you quite a bit. What were you thinking about that moment? Um, I was just trying to be present, uh, be where my feet are, um, be grateful for what's got me here um, and for these girls and this team and just to do anything that I can, you know, to leave it all out on the field in that moment. Right, we go front row left, Ryan. Uh, Kelly, I think we know stuff going on in the background, things like that with your decision. What was the most difficult part of pushing yourself to perform, perform this stage, this team while balancing everything going on as, as the year kind of continued? Um, I think just through hard work, um, staying true to myself, just kind of keeping my head down. Um, even though like you don't want to see it, you still see it and it still kind of gets to you, but just not being able to, you know, say something back, just being able to go to work every day and just, I don't just have fun <laughs> to be honest. All right, we got a second right left to Jenny. Hey, Kenzie, uh, you obviously had probably more time with Kelly over the course of the season. You all count, come in carrying the burden of winning another one, and so I know the pressure was on everybody. But how was it unique for her, and how did you sort of see her processing through that to get to this point tonight? Like she said, when her decision to come here was not easy. And... Kelly and I, I caught her in Japan a couple years ago, so our relationship was already built beforehand. So just being able to be there with her through every step of the way and see her grow through it, it was just an, a special experience. I mean, her confidence has gone through the roof and just being able to kind of establish that. I never got my chest bump, though. <laughs> I got the dog pile, though, so I'll take it. But <laughs> just being able to kind of be her be there for her no matter what like even if she was giving up home runs or whatever happened strikeouts and shutouts i mean i was there with her the whole entire way and she knew that i told her a bunch of times she could throw the ball and wherever she wanted and i'd still catch it <laughs> so um i'm just so so proud of just how it started to how it ended i'm so proud of her and just i get to catch her this summer too so i'm really looking forward to that as well Go second round left, last question for players. Uh, Kelly, uh, Thomas Jones, Austin American Statesman. Yeah, you came on in the fifth, I think two on for Mia Scott of Texas. Uh, a weird play at first base. From your perspective, what happened there? And just how big, With the, I think you guys had a one run lead, how big was that moment in the game? Um, it was huge. I mean, they definitely had the momentum in that moment. Uh, so just being able to try to stop it, um, I saw Mia Scott kind of come off the bag, and I was just telling Avery, like, turn around, turn around, let's get her, come on. And she finally heard me, and we got it done. So it was pretty cool to see and just to be able to get out of that.